How is Air Cargo benefiting from e-commerce? I'm joined today by Milin Tavshakar. He is CEO of Smart Cargo. Hello, Milin. Hello, how are you? Good, and thank you very much for joining me. How do you see Air Cargo digital transformation progressing right now? And for that matter, what do we mean when we talk about digital transformation in the air cargo industry? Well, Air Cargo has been around for as long as airlines have been around. It's a little known fact, but cargo is a serious revenue stream for many airlines around the world. It has always moved using a very paper-based approach. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's all about moving boxes through the airport network and did not require a whole lot of technology. The business has always been B2B. Uh, with freight forwarding being most of the demand channel, mm -hmm. uh, which also was not very well developed in terms of technology usage or digitization. So it predominantly remained a paper-based operation for many, many years with a desire to, to digitally transform at some point in time in future. Well, the last few years have, have seen a lot of changes happening uh, where Freight forwarders have up to the technology to become a little more digitized. Um, and the carriers by themselves have also started replacing many paper-based processes by digital business process software. So there's a, a lot to go further, but I think it's a good start. There's always a investment bottleneck in those kinds of areas, but airlines are taking digitization efforts pretty seriously. Um, especially given all the attention that Air Cargo received during the pandemic years uh, when the volumes were going very, very high through the roof and there was a need for speed as well as efficiencies uh, mm -hmm. and airlines had no other option but to digitize some of those paper-based processes. So. Well, Air Cargo has always been viewed as the most expensive option uh, mm -hmm. And yet, even that being the case, e-commerce is it's still a popular option or still being used quite heavily in e-commerce as you can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, e-commerce is a completely new found revenue stream for airlines. If they can, they can target it and they can bring that volume on an airplane. Yes, it is expensive, uh, but the most successful e-commerce distribution is via airplanes and if you think about Amazon Prime Air you know is it is an example of, of how e-commerce goods are being moved through a faster shipping option and that has gotten all of us used to it uh, we expect everything to be delivered next day or, or within two days um, and if you really are focused on speed you cannot beat an airplane you know that's that's pretty straightforward so yeah. E-commerce is a desired revenue stream by global airlines. It's just that, you know, it's a very different ball game. E-commerce operates on a unit level transaction, uh, which is a package for people who are buying off the internet. And Air Cargo has for decades been a consolidation play. Uh, where airlines have always moved pallets or ULDs or consolidated shipments through international movement of their airplanes and that's been the core business. So e-commerce is a, is a completely new area, is a completely different play field for airlines, uh, but it's a very high growth area, it's a very high volume area and most airlines want to make that switch from becoming or from staying a consolidation play to moving into an e-commerce play. You know, are we talking about primarily the use of uh, e-commerce for belly capacity in passenger planes or are there freighters as well that are being called into service? Yeah, Which is so sort of I think it's, it's, it's a great question, you know. Um, e-commerce is more domestic at this point, you know, and most airplanes that fly on a domestic network are all narrow body airplanes and have to go through the belly capacity, which is a perfect use case for a small parcel application. Mm -hmm. The wide body airplanes all fly internationally and they cater to the use case where you are flying consolidation cargo, where you are flying pallets and pallets of pharmaceutical products or, or perishables. But when you talk about e-commerce, you know, it is a very complementary play in terms of capacity for airlines, but it is completely un un unutilized or at least underutilized, you know, um, because of 
the lack of tools and technology and the skill sets available with airlines to approach that marketplace. It's e-commerce has just been dominated by the integrators, which are the FedExes and the UPSs of the world, uh, for a good reason. You know, they have the assets and they have the technology that was built. Um, but both of them together, if an airline has to match, is doable. Um, and then that's kind of the e-commerce differentiation between normal air cargo and e-commerce air cargo. They are not competing with each other, they're actually complementing with each other. Um, not many people kind of see it that way. Uh, it's not an either or, mm -hmm. I think it's an additional stream of revenue airlines can, can look at for domestic utilization of their belly capacity. Well, with cross-border e-commerce growing at the rate of over 15% a year, yep. what opportunity does that present to airlines? That's a very interesting question. So cross-border e-commerce is now becoming much bigger by the day because the direct-to-consumer approach is now facilitated by the internet. You know, you look at applications that are on your smartphones, like the Temu application, or the Shines of the world, or you buy, buy through TikTok. You know, these demand channels provide an opportunity where shipping can begin at the point of origin, somewhere overseas, let's say in Vietnam or in Hong Kong. And now you can cut down on all of the staging of a product that was necessary in, in the past, because you would move product into into a market that's closer to your buyer before it gets to the last mile. With the digitization and e-commerce cross-border applications, the product journey begins real time from overseas and is not staged at all. It, it begins at the door of a fulfillment center overseas and then lands to a buyer's doorstep in the United States. And that journey was never a piece of the air cargo action in the past. Mm -hmm. Today it is um, because customs processes have become much more easier, you know, um, and all of the complexity around the supply chain is much lesser. So it's definitely a, a lot more attractive to the shippers because they are now cutting down on all the staging costs and all the inventory costs that are necessary. And for the buyers, it's as good as buying from any dot com here in the United States they don't really even know that the product is originating from a point of origin which could be overseas uh, and is getting delivered at their doors. Thank you so much, Milan, for giving us this insight into how air commerce or air cargo is being benefited by e-commerce both domestically and cross-border. Thanks for that. I do want to ask you very briefly though about smart cargo specifically, mm -hmm. as well as your Deliver Direct product. Can you explain to us what that is? Sure. Well, um, Deliver Direct is just that, Deliver Direct. So in the air cargo world that we've been talking about, the relationship has always been with a business. The relationship between an airline and the cargo world is a B2B relationship. Mm -hmm. Deliver Direct transforms that completely. It allows an airline to have a direct relationship with the shipper um, and capture the demand from the shipper at a unit level and on the other side it allows an airline to have a direct relationship to the consignee or the buyer of the product and deliver to the doorstep of the consignee. These two functions which are now direct to the shipper and direct to the consignee were never a part of the airline's thinking, were never a part of the airline's solution because airline was and predominantly remains a B2B play. Mm -hmm. um, we change all that with Deliver Direct. So Deliver Direct is a product that Delta owns, um, Delta promotes, and Delta is responsible for in, in kind of creating the service around the Delta domestic network in the United States. It's a big opportunity for Delta Airlines um, to monetize unused capacity underneath their bellies across a wide network in the United States. Merlin, thank you again so much for your, for your insights. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Milan Tavshagar of Smart Cargo. Thank you very much for watching.